Special shout out to all my patrons. TikTok's gonna do what TikTok's gonna do. Ooh, ooh, damn! Can't believe. Is this who I think it is? Hello. Hello, Jelvin. Hey, what's up? You want to talk about body count? Sure. All right. I think it matters for both men and women. Why? Because promiscuity creates unstable relationship patterns. That does not say that people are incapable, but it is statistically dangerous or more risky. Can you uh, link divorce me rates to are those statistics. Yeah, no problem. I'll get you the PubMed article. It is, right. uh, so. It uh, would be higher divorce rates when mates are plentiful. This evidence is from Denmark. It's a pretty long read. So. Well, that's why you just read the abstract and the conclusion to start. You can read the whole thing later. Let's see. They don't give a conclusion. They just show a link, a correlation between high, high partners and higher divorce rates. I would argue that there's other things they're not taking into account, but I haven't read the full article yet. And that's fair. No, no, I, I concede on that as well. Right there, this is a complex um, topic when we're talking about the uh, social economic status and childhood trauma. Uh, age, all that stuff, right? I, I, I can see it on that, but I would say uh, age is probably the bigger one. Um, a actually, not even age, um, because I've read uh analysis of studies similar to this, and one of the things they point to is um, children, and that people who have high numbers of partners are more likely to have children, which um, which going into a new marriage within already with a child already is more likely to lead to divorce, yeah, yeah. So, I mean. If we can, if we can agree, like, can we agree that children from a legal standpoint should not be having intercourse and the argument that kids are going to be kids is just irresponsible? Well, from a legal standpoint of what, like what age are we talking about? Um, we'll do the age of consent. Um, that varies from state. We'll, we'll focus on legality over morality. Sure. What's wrong with 16 year olds having sex with each other? So, I mean, if we're talking. Consent... Oh, he's gone. Okay. That was weird. Oh, he's back. Okay. It's just a glitch on TikTok. All right. If we're if we're talking about legality, then I'll, I'll concede, right? But and any children, you know, 13, 14, 15, um, they cannot consent to that act. That is not children being children. That is uh, irresponsible guardians or educators not protecting the children in the environment um you, you think you're saying that 15 year olds can't consent with each other yes interesting uh so legally what do you, that's what do you, what, by what, definition what do you su suggest well legally 15 year olds in most places i'm pretty sure they are, won't get arrested for having sex with them. but we're talking yeah but we're talking about legality right so if we just stick to the laws to make this simple because morality will be subjective and I, I i know the game you like to play so we'll exclude all morality we're just talking legality 15 year olds um and more you know around the united states can't consent correct uh yeah they can't consent to like adults no they can't they cannot consent to intercourse even with each other Sure, I believe they would probably have uninformed consent. Sure. Okay. So, uh, is so who is responsible for that act? The parents are responsible for their children, correct? Sure. What are you What are you proposing then? 
So I would propose that parents need to be held responsible for their children engaging in such a dangerous, harmful act and also prioritizing that children in general um, under the age of consent that are engaging in intercourse um, would be a form of trauma or neglect from their parents. And that is why body count would matter for them. It do is you, not. Do you count, recognize body, that there are some things that should probably be illegal, but are you know, almost impossible to maintain legally in the system that we're currently in? Or even, fine, any, but, even any system, really. But when we're talking about why does it matter, I would say that it matters for both men and women, right? Because of the trauma, the neglect, the Wait, how statistical problem. How does that correlate to body count? Because um, an over-sexualized mind is typically the result of something happening to the child or the child being neglected and their intrinsic nature not being met with extracurricular activities. And how, where's your link for that? Um, I don't have a specific link. I could find one, but I was going off of if you keep children preoccupied with sports or 4-H or like a goal, right, then they are less likely to be engaging in intercourse with each other because they are engaging in like an act that is abundant with other people and adults that are supposed to be responsible for them. 15 year olds should not be unmonitored together. Again, uh, I think there are that that's a, a law. Like if you're, if you're trying to put that into law, that's not a practical law. That's, that's I think the, uh, the law that I would uh, implement would be, it doesn't exist. Right. But I think parents should be held responsible so? for the actions of their children uh, sure. legally. Like what, like what would you do to a parent then? Um, from fines to jail time to uh, mandatory counseling, kind of like kind of like anger management, uh, court ordered anger management, court ordered um, parenting classes, court ordered uh, therapy or. Uh, so you have a do you think 15 year olds um, are old enough to be left home alone? Um, by themselves, I think that it's a gamble. It's a risk. Um, I but think do that you think that parents should be held accountable if they let their 15 year old come home from school alone, if they're like at work or do they need to get a babysitter for those kids? I think if something happens to the child that they should be held responsible. Sure. But I, I <laughs> so this is where, this is the point we get down to, right? So a parent lets their kid home alone. Leaves their kid home alone, right? Because they're, yeah. I would say, 15, totally fine legally to leave your kid home alone. I, I don't think they need a babysitter at 15. The 15-year-old 15 yeah. breaks the rules, rules that you clearly laid out about having yeah. people over, has somebody over, it has sex. Now you're saying that the parent, by not doing anything illegal, right, should now be held legally responsible for this act. Yeah, because I think the parent is responsible for knowing their child, and if and if they cannot trust their children... That, they did and, trust their child. Now you have to prove. The, it, now you have to prove that the parent didn't have reason to trust their child. No, I don't have to prove anything. All I, I would I have to prove have is to that prove their it. child did something dangerous for themselves or others. Right. That's so. They so parents can do what they want. Right. They can they can trust their child, but if they trust their child incorrectly, then now that is they have to face the consequences of their actions. To be safe, then maybe they get a babysitter, or maybe they put their children in extracurricular activity for an hour or however long. Um, whether that's, again, 4-H, sports, violin practice, um, arts and crafts, um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, really doesn't matter to me. Children okay, the need extra The parent does all of that and the kid sneaks out at night. Now what? Then, again, the child, something is going wrong. The child is now in danger. And, and we're getting far away from body count. But, um, again, it is the responsibility of the parent to keep their children safe. And if they don't know how to do that, then now I believe it is in the child's best interest to ha to hold the parent accountable in uh, parenting courses, counseling, or something along those lines. I wouldn't even want to get to the point of like um, fines or anything. I would prioritize education, right? Because the finding parent, them or putting the parent them... put locks on the child's window if they don't trust the kid. That would be management. Um, more More of a priority should be getting to the root cause of why the child snuck out and the overall relationship and bond that the parent Don't has. Don't you think that sometimes limiting a child's freedom as much as you're saying that we should causes children to act out because they do not have that, that said freedom and children, especially teenagers, uh, Absolutely. Have, a, Which... have a, like an inherent need to 
to rebel? Only if their intrinsic nature is not being met. So there's a study about rats that I can link you, or you can just look it up. And I think it's called Rat Farm or Rat Park or something like that. And if you put rats in captivity, which is essentially what you know we're doing to humans, you put us in a house or a cage. And if you just isolate them and you give them water, or water, and then you give them water with, uh, I, I don't know what word I can say on TikTok, C, you know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Um, if it's empty, if the cage is empty, they typically always take the water. But if you put enrichment into the cage, um, from scent work to agility to obstacles, um, and you can give them water and water, um, they don't even touch the water. So by, again, by giving children appropriate outlets of enrichment on an intrinsic nature, they are less li- they are statistically less likely to sneak out and be rebellious. Well, rats are. Do you have a study about this in people? Well, humans are animals like rats. We are vastly different from rats. Our yes, social but cognizance we are... is insanely different than rats. Understood. So the forms of enrichment and the intrinsic nature would be different, right? But in terms of operating classical conditioning, it applies to all sentient life. Sure. Do you have a study that proves that? Yes. <laughs> you can do any research you want on operating classical conditioning. They, they literally use ABA, which involves classical and operant conditioning on children, especially children with autism. Yeah, ABA doesn't work for autistic kids. Wow. What a, what a dangerous and ludicrous statement. What do, you, do you have a source for that? Uh, yeah, I have a uh, website. I just haven't linked it into my link, link document. But I, yeah, I, would, I, would, I would love to see that. Yeah, sure. Let me see where, where it went. So you're saying all of the studies and research promoting ABA and all of uh, yeah, what is I helping in, autistic worked, children? Yeah, hold, hold on. I worked, I literally worked in this field for like seven years. Yes, I'm saying this very, very confidently that ABA is not a good thing for autistic children. It actually can be considered uh, different t- forms of abuse. So yeah, I'm saying yes, this if, very, if the parent, very confidently. Yes, if the parent, be, yes, if the parent doesn't know what they do and they treat their their child no, like the like a dog. Schools. Let's see. So he there. You can go to autisticscienceperson.com. They have a plethora of resources. So uh, studies, articles, v- the, a vast majority of um, a lot of them that show the dangers of ABA therapy. Um, they show how much it's correlated with PTSD, with self injurious behavior, thing, um, things like that. So they go into a plethora of that. Uh, shout out little detective for sending this to me actually last week it came in handy almost immediately so yeah aba is very harmful we should be moving away from it as a standard for care for children with autism but it still works right i'll I'll look it over later but like you said with the first one i can't read it all right now i have to look for it i would argue that it doesn't work i would argue if it's causing all of these harms that it's not actually working I mean, everything causes some form of harm to one degree or another. Are you saying positive reinforcement is harmful? Uh, I'm saying that I have to weigh the positives with the negatives. And from the research that I've done um, and having worked in the field, uh, I would say ABA causes more negatives than positives. Yeah, but what components of ABA specifically? Because are you saying positive reinforcement is harmful? If so, how? Uh, I think it can be in certain instances. How? Uh, I think sometimes you can you can get children uh, to I don't want to say addicted to certain things, but I agree with you. To, okay, yeah, no. yeah, I agree with you that it can create an entitlement, right? And have you read the studies that um, uh, human? I can I can link this one too if you want. Um, that human beings um, need low levels of distress in their life. Uh, I've not read those studies, but I'd be suffice it to agree with it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we're kind of off off track here, but I think this is the best conversation we've had. Um, Possibly. Yeah. So do, do, would you would you agree or concede just on a little bit that from a sociological standpoint that uh, the higher the body count, the more it displays um, unstable relationships or an inconsistency in relationships? Uh, no, just because, like I said, when I look at the meta-analysis of, like, studies that you've you've pointed out, right, they, they don't link the – the body count itself to like high rates of divorce or marital unhappiness. 
what it links to it is is a plethora of other reasons so until i I need to see a direct correlation but right now it seems that there's multiple things that are adding to it not just the body count would that from from behavior from a behavior modification standpoint since you work in that field you would have to know that that's impossible i don't think it's impossible you it's literally impossible because there's too many antecedents throughout the uh, individual's uh, life from um, their their upbringing, socioeconomic status, to uh, single parent household versus uh, multi multi diverse family household, to you know what I mean? Like like so, at what at what point are you able to specify the one antecedent is is leading to that behavior? Well, then if if I can't, then why would I say that body count matters? Based off of the research, right? But if uh, based the research of, is saying, of if the analysis of the research is saying that this it is a plethora of other reasons, they don't specify body count. It's just that your body count can be linked to these other things, right? So a well, high body count the, has, a, the act, like I said, has a statistical likelihood of children. So you have a likelihood of that. A high body count has a statistical likelihood of, of um, not. But the like, act of having multiple partners. And like by definition, if just just through behavioral observation alone, right? If you never spoke to an individual, right? Let's say that somebody from the ages of 18 to 20 has 50 bodies, right? Could we not conclude that during those age that that age range that that person had an inconsistent or I mean a consistent pattern of inconsistent relationships? But why does that why does that matter? Because from a, a long-term standpoint, right? Um, you know what reinforcement theory is, right? Yeah, sure. So if we if we analyze reinforcement theory, right? Behavior is on a pattern, and so if somebody is engaging, so we just we establish that too much positive reinforcement creates um, almost a drug response, right? Mm-hmm. And so if somebody is consistently seeking out relationships that are easy. And they're just getting pleasure. They're getting the dopamine. They're getting the serotonin. They're getting all the happy, yummy feelings, right? Without the conflict resolution, without the team building, without the distress, which we both agreed is important. So if we understand that too much positive reinforcement is damaging and humans need distress, then the more bodies that you have without distress and conflict resolution would negatively affect your overall uh, relationships like in general because not only that what we established but you're going to be comparing each new relationship to the last uh so two things i think that the that one of the issues here is where we're conflating the fact that they that they are going to need these are we're conflating the fact that they want want that right what if they don't want any of that what if they yeah, don't no, want and, and, deep relationships? So then why yeah, is it that's a big fine. deal? No, no, and that's fine. I will I will one hundred percent concede. If somebody never wants to be a mother, if someone never or, or a father as well, um, because again, it's it's for both parties. I don't th- I completely disagree with the men who are like, oh, men can have high body counts. I disagree with that. Um, if either party doesn't care about family, doesn't want to be in a long term relationship then I think that's something for them to to consider, right? But to say, oh, it doesn't matter, it does matter. Because it, it only doesn't matter if you're okay with having inconsistent relationships and you and you want to be alone for basically all of your life. Well, you, you don't want a long-term partner. How, so can you, exp- uh, question for you, how do, how do adult entertainers do it? So it's, those would be the exception to the rule, right? There's rules and there's exceptions to the rule. I said that at the beginning. Right. I'm not saying that it's impossible. It's just less likely from a statistical standpoint. Well, I think to say that it matters would be an absolute. Right. So you would that would be an absolute statement. Just like it doesn't matter is an absolute statement. And I would say the second you have an exception, then all of a then it doesn't matter anymore. I think that your statement is respectfully um, and genuinely. I think your statement, the way that I perceive it is an absolute. But I'm yeah, saying I said it was that an absolute as well. Yes. Okay. I, I, I I'm not saying it matters 100. percent I'm saying that it can matter for different reasons, and there are things to analyze. So if somebody, let's say that somebody wants to have uh, fun in college, right? And they say, and they see all these posts, and like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They are are never taught 
Oh, uh, well, it matters for my son's excited, by the way. Um, it matters uh, or it doesn't matter uh, unless I want a long term relationship. Right. Because later on down the road, it might be more it might be more challenging. What would you consider a high body count? What's the number? I don't know, man. Honestly, I think it depends on the person. It depends on their situation. I really don't like putting a specific number because I think it's contextual. I think high body count would be on a spectrum. Like somebody, again, and if it's a, con- a consensual body, I'm assuming in this conversation we're talking about consensual bodies. Correct. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's not about a specific number. It's it's about the time frame. It's about if it happened during, you know, their childhood. It's just it matters depending on the individual to learn uh, more context about them let's just really quick just to just to, to to lay a baseline here when i talk about body count i'm mostly talking about people over the age of 18 uh, i don't think any i don't think people under the age of consent should be having sex for a multitude of reasons predominantly being they're more likely to get stis or uh, get pregnant because they don't understand um safe sex as well yet but typically i'm just i'm talking about people over the age of 18 when i talk about body count would you would you um, be opposed to putting that at the end so body count doesn't matter for 18 plus? I mean, I, I feel like I can just if somebody asks me about it, I can just say I'm talking about 18 year olds. I, I my oh. hope my hope is people don't come in here thinking I'm talking about teenagers because I don't usually think about teenagers. The only the, the only reason I bring it up is because the amount of parents that that have said the words to me, kids will be kids, right? And I mean, really I think me. I think it's true. I think you can do everything in your power as a parent to teach your kids not to do it, but the 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 unsafe thing would be to assume they never will. So I would I would argue that the safe thing would be to get them comprehensive sex education so that way if they do do it because I've met plenty of of kids in working in schools who after getting comprehensive sex education did make the decision for themselves not to have sex. Because they've learned that sex is more than just a one time. They, they're they not just looking at sex via corn, which is what a lot of teenagers get their ideas of sex from. So I would think yeah. it's, I would say it's way more dangerous to try to shield them from it or to try to hide it, for, or not hide it, but try to keep them from it. Because you're just risking them going in blind, which is even worse. Yeah, no, it was, for me, it would be more of putting them in extracurricular activities as opposed to like hiding it or pretending like it doesn't exist. Um, also, I think that, I know that people want to uh, put sex ed K through 12. I don't know if you agree with that. You probably do. I do. Um, I don't want to. Okay. Yeah. But um, I would, I would want people to start talking about adding psychology and sociology, maybe not K through 12, but definitely as, as uh, well, uh, the beginning basis of um, sex health, sex health education. I don't know if you've ever read the actual guidelines of what, 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 um, like yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like not. Yeah, psychology yeah, and sociology yeah. are part of that because we teach uh, family and friend circles starting in kindergarten. Um, so, so uh, uh, like, you would be getting a basis of psychology and sociology. I would want. I would. You know the like how like psych 101 starts in in college most of the time. I would mm-hmm. want to take those college level courses and implement them. I think maybe seventh grade at the at the youngest because psychology is super complex, right? And we want to make sure that they can comprehend what's going on. Um, but maybe freshman year. I want to take I want to take a college level site course and put it freshman year. I mean, it just depends. It just depends uh, on the specific topics um, that you're going to that you're going to be broaching and how you're going to age it down for them to understand it. Hey, Jovan, I appreciate the conversation. I've been working on how I how I conduct myself and how I do all that. And I appreciate what you do, man. And I, and I hope you have a blessed day, man. All right. You too.